Chapter 66 Well, what if she's in trouble or something? Isn't there anything you can do? Chow's refusal to stop grinding his teeth was agitating his friends, apparently it would damage the boy's enamel, or some other unimportant concern. Leopold chose to ignore the sound of it, wiping strands of sweat matted hair from his brow. If I could, do you not think I would have done something by now? Of course they were all panicking, the arrival of the heavenly dragon had been almost silent, and then the portal had collapsed entirely, and they were in this damp and hellish cave that these happy-go-lucky types had been content to call as their own, and... Of course. Of course. Of course. Leopold. Father murmured, only the dead silence of his voice hinting at how displeased the family head was. Leopold had always had a good sense of father's moods, known when to look askance and when to speak, which was a rare thing. But father sounded as if he had just finished ending the noise from an animal caught in a trap. Hey! Snap out of it! You can't go getting all blank-eyed, because we need you here now. Well, that didn't sound like father at all. He had never sounded quite so. ER Stand back, guys. I'm going to use full power. Zams, don't do it. Before Leopold could register the words on his father's lips, somebody threw dirt on his face. It stung a little, and Leopold's immediate instinct was to whirl where he stood and strike out, but before he had even had time to truly register what had happened, something smoky and incredibly foul was blown towards him. Coughing and spluttering, the old man felt the visions fade away and the gloomy cavern ambience return. Well, it didn't seem quite so gloomy, to be honest, his shoulder, which had been aching recently, also felt a little better but damn Natal, that was beside the point. The plant girl was looking very proud of herself, of course, Well, Chow, despite still looking worried, was trying not to laugh. Wiping the dirt from his face, Leopold tried to remember precisely what he had planned to say, but it all seemed a little inconsequential. Right, sorry. I suppose I was getting a little ahead of myself. I'm sure there's something to be done, I just do not have the skill nor knowledge to do it. So, I suppose we should focus on what can be done, instead. Bones had been quietly laboring in the background, the patience of the skeletal creature no longer surprising Leopold. He was a hard worker despite the eons of his long existence, and no matter how worried he seemed, he could still find time to look for. Ah. I think it's finally time. Don't you? The skeleton announced gravely, holding aloft a horn of nightmarish intent and certain craftsmanship. Leopold had recognized the instrument the moment he set eyes on it of course, but... Zhao had already grasped the horn, several times, fumbling it, for true to its design it was as infuriating to wield as it was infernal to behold, and blown, before Leopold even had found the presence to shout a stuttering warning. P-T-T-H-T-T-T-T Came the weak and unimpressive noise from the horn, sounding like the wheeze of stale air from a punctured bag of disgustingly overcooked crunchy dairy-flavored products. Uh. Zhao whispered, scratching the back of his neck and only stopping when Bones gently and firmly pulled his hand back before the young man could draw blood. Hello. You've reached the Halls of Harrowing. We really care about your attempts to reach our infernal cohort. A messenger is being dispatched, so please try sounding your instrument again after they've had time to pit fight through roughly four to five lesser demons for the pleasure of being your service representative. Uh. Zhao continued, staring blankly at the peculiar horn. The words that came from inside of it sounded incredibly distant, and were a little painful to listen to, if you listened too long or too carefully. Scowling, Leopold grabbed the blasphemous object with his good arm, resisting the urge to smash it against the cavern floor. I take it none of you are particularly frequent in your interactions with the sort of ilk that hand out priceless artifacts so freely. Harumph. Leopold's mind raced, trying to stock of what they had, what they could do. What was reliable? His eyes darted to his companions, one by one. 
the boy, Zhao, then. Without a minder, he was a danger to himself and to those around him. Still, he seemed hardy enough, and of resilient spirit. Zambi had a lot of energy, and now that the sting of dirt had left his face, that smoke was rather calming, even if it did smell distressingly like patchouli, and would likely cling to his jacket after he had finally found the chance to clean it, somewhat. Bones was the most valuable, however. Very well, then. Closing his eyes, Leopold tried to remember the present. Here you are. You can feel the age in your bones, but you're feeling better than you have for some time. The air is musky, and smells of mushrooms. That feeling against your neck is sweat. It's good, it proves you're alive. Don't be scared, just try a little harder. You don't gain anything without a little fear. The smoke crackled around his feet, and Leopold took a cautious step back. Watch carefully, if you will. I shall need you all to comport yourselves carefully, as I have. I have no idea what I'm doing. There was a strange, thrilling sensation to it. Like being young again, and sneaking outside with the distant but palpable fear of capture. He could always blame his moods on Brand, and find the win in knowing that if he were to be punished, at least Brand would be as well, however. Stone hissed and molded and melted away as if caressed by a particularly viscous and fast-acting acid, the kind you would rarely find outside of stage plays and laboratories. Leopold gulped, wanting to say something or perhaps wipe the sweat from his brow, but what was rarely told to you about magic is that it made you look ridiculous. And breaking from it for a moment might have unpleasant repercussions, and it was far better to look ridiculous than to look dead. Chow was whispering something to Bones, the skeleton was holding both hands to his face as if fretting, which was a little amusing, but unimportant. Of course, the dragon was still wounded. It was damage Leopold had cost and sought out, and he never struck from a possession of weakness, if he could avoid it. Anything looking for the trace energy leaking from Dragunov might be able to find him. But it was addictive. No matter who you are. Once you've allowed yourself to deal a lacerating wound to another creature, it becomes a compulsion. You can couch it with all the pretty language you like, but it's even crueler than finishing off a wounded animal, or perhaps, pinning woolen wings behind glass. That's odd. He could see the dragon flying off, and... Leopold smiled, just a little and risked finally placing his hand to his forehead. It was warm and thick with sweat, but... It seems that Clever Witch is quite fine. I'm not sure what happened, entirely, Dragunov is leaving. I, damned if I can say, why. Still, I'm more concerned as to the fact that the portal hasn't been reopened. The collective sigh of relief that went up amongst those three was pleasant. The way they bumped fists afterward was a little ridiculous, but if it made them smile then it was fine. No one said anything for a bit, although Chow and Zambi kept nervously laughing, that way that the very young did, even though Leopold supposed Chow was a young man and Zambi was. A Silvo Sapien? Damn, what he wouldn't trade for a good thesaurus. Hey! Leo! Thank you! So much! I, I honestly can't think of things that I hate more than waiting for. For bad news. Chow began, and Leopold stared pointedly at the ceiling. We're quite in agreement. It's normal to feel that way, and anyway. Lorelei is quite talented. As I have said. It would be a shame to lose that, though you would really think Dragunov would have recovered by now. Of course they hadn't seen the state of the great dragon, felt his weakness. Leopold bit his lip. He was practically letting the chance evaporate around him. How often would something so powerful as Dragunov be reduced to bleeding raw magic from wounds that were, they were practically... Infected. Tap, tap, tap. Hey, Leopold. 
Are you all right? You could probably try taking a breather and then maybe getting things started again over here. Of course, Zhao. Apologies, I was just thinking about things. It's funny how the world turns. You must remember, when you return. Ah, when we return to our world. I'd beg it of you, if I was more servile. Smiling thinly, Leopold shook his head, and eased his hair back with a practiced calmness. Let's try to stay focused, for now. There'll be plenty of time to forget what we should have remembered later. Bones interjected, and it took Leopold a moment to realize that the old skeleton was having a laugh at his expense. Surprising himself, he laughed as well, laughed until it almost hurt, almost. Right, too right. A moment, though. I swear, this is a little easier with my compatriots skilled in staying quite away from me and knowing when to do this and that. Well, what can we do? Standing around and waiting for you to magic things up was neat the first time, but if we can kind of skip past it now that we've already seen it. Zambi began, and she had a good point. Leopold watched in astonishment as, under his very careful direction, the three of them were soon assembled in a very clumsy, very ugly, and nevertheless serviceable magical triagram. Herm. Is magic really just standing awkwardly and thinking very hard about things? Maybe I could become a rather good magician. Bones chuckled jovially, his lower jaw clattering noisily enough to distract Leopold from trying to remember exactly where the portal had been. I wouldn't recommend it. Most magicians are horrible people. He replied idly, and found it, almost precisely as they had left it. Perfect, just perfect, if not a little peculiar. What had drawn Dragunov, and what he had done? Lorelei seemed unharmed and yet... What if she had some interest in the demise of the great beast? An uneasy thought began to prey at the edges of his mind, as familiar as the bands of sweat that threatened to overwhelm his vision until it was a blurry haze. Of course, it wouldn't be hard to seem for all the world as an innocent, with little experience. But one who was naturally skilled in the art, and highly knowledgeable might affect a decent charade. And if they did, then... No. That's quite stupid. Let it rest. Leopold whispered, and reopened the portal. It sprung back to life with a sigh, and the sigh of magic was mercifully louder than his own, letting him hide just how tired he felt. Yes. That ought to do it. Can we just start running through it, or... Zambi asked, and Leopold shook his head before returning it to rest in his hands, taking a seat against the ground. Just throw things through, if they aren't too fragile. I'll need a moment, and we'll join you shortly. Still, you should be quite happy. It seems we've done well. What would leaving this place mean? Some gift for Mr. Mammon, something a merchant would appreciate. A ledger? No, terribly boring. Certainly there was something he could do, perhaps a replacement for that little cart, if it were not intrinsically linked to Mr. Mammon himself. What did he know about Mammon, truly? At his first impression of her, finding a gift for Crimselino would have been simple. More jewelry, increasingly gaudy and pointlessly priceless. But now, perhaps there was some simply trinket he could give to show his appreciation. Something more meaningful, though he knew not what. They both deserved it. Sighing, Leopold opened his eyes, in the span of an instant it seemed as if Chow and Zambi had thrown half the dem cavern plex, if it were to be called that, through the portal. Maybe he had judged the place too quickly. Bones was resting next to him. You should know, it really means the world to us. We've all grown quite attached to Lorelei, and, well, nobody wants to live in fear. The skeleton laughed quietly and creakily. Whether it was magic or tar that held him together, Leopold wasn't certain, he had half the mind to ask, but his curiosity felt oddly demure. Don't trouble yourself. 
I know you three, must have had wonderful times, together. What had he done with his friends? What memories had he given them? Oh, it's been wonderful and horrible in equal measure. At first, we had planned to make the Alush settlement on the island, but... Well, I suppose in part, HRMN. Sorry. Bones rattled out an apology, and Leopold blanched, fingers running through his beard. I think I'm the one who should be apologizing, and there's so little time to do it in. What an utter fool, I've been. Never. Bones said, quietly. It is never, ever too late to apologize for something. But it will always be too late if you let the chance pass you by. The skeleton said nothing, and was completely silent. Leopold was silent too, at first. And then, excusing himself quietly. Ciao. Zambi. Err, and you as well, Bones, thank you. But I'm... There is something I need to say, before we all pile through. If it isn't too much trouble, I'd like a moment of your time, and... Leopold realized his shoulder was shaking, but held. He was of good stock and tradition. Fear wasn't going to win out against two simple words. I'm... Somehow, he knew in the moment what was going on. Perhaps it was the fear of death, serving as a warning in the air moments before it welcomed him once again, or perhaps even the senses of a weak magician were sharp enough to call out in clear warning. He knew well the feeling of the ground yielding to his magic. But he was not the only one seeking Dragunov. The portal itself shook as the earth below them trembled, its magic, already weak on his end from his own pallid imitations, had borne the silent demands of the summoner as well as it could, but imitations could not hold against poison strong enough to kill the idea of things, it fizzled and cracked and dissipated and was no more. Zhao had been trying to throw things through when he realized what was happening, he fell forward through air and landed on cavern rock that had been rock mere moments before, but was now acidic mist. It likely would have cut him in half as neatly as any blade, if it hadn't been for Zembi. Despite her small size, it seemed almost as if she was beloved by fortune, itself, for the moment the ground had began to split and crack, leaving only the far-off glow of impossibly tiny cavern green beams that might have been eyes, staring up in unconcealed hatred. That moment, she had fallen flat on her face. It had pushed Chow forward just a bit, and when she had risen to her feet, the ground she rose upon, now a pillar of unsolid stone, split further, into fragments of fragments. Zambi's legs flew in either direction and her arms beat in the air, despite having nothing in common with wings. It would have been ridiculous, or tragic, except that as she tumbled down the broken pillar, cursing with surprising vehemence, it set off a chain reaction amongst the shattering pillars, one of which hit the ground Zhao was standing upon, knocking his falling earth into that which bore Bones and Leopold, and sending all three rapidly plummeting after her. Leopold would have laughed, but no laughter came. The last thing he saw as light left was the look upon the pursuing nightmare of shadows backled scales leering down at them in anger. And, admittedly, surprise. The fear had left him at some point, and Leopold found himself surprised. Usually, it was around such times that death came for him, and yet... Consciousness drained, replaced by a calming quiet, and the dark washed over them like a deep blanket. Chapter End <laughs>